No, it's not. Remember, your body temperature is 98.6. So it's only about 12 degrees warmer than your hands. So it's just a little bit warmer than your hands. But it's not hot water. Because if you use hot water, it'll kill the yeast. Because yeast is alive. Okay? Two and a half to three cups of all-purpose flour. So it looks like we've got plenty of flour here. Two tablespoons of salad oil. We've got some oil. And salad oil can be peanut oil or vegetable oil or corn oil. We use canola oil around here, but any kind of oil is good. You can even use olive oil. But what kind of oil can't you use? Uh, I don't know. Motor oil. You don't want to use any motor oil, do you? No. Okay, so we got the oil. A tablespoon of sugar. So we've got some sugar right here. Three tablespoons of baking soda. So we've got some baking soda right here. Now we're going to use baking soda. We're going to brush that on the top of the pretzels to make a nice crust. What else can you use baking soda for? You can use it for brushing your teeth, exactly. What else? For bee stings. For bee stings? It'll work for bee stings. You ever see a box in the refrigerator of absorb or odors? No. Put, yeah, that'll do it. If you put a box in there, it'll absorb all the odors. It's great for cleaning out the sink if the sink has kind of a stinky smell. You can pour that down the sink. Have you ever made volcanoes in science class? You know, you put the baking soda in, you put a little vinegar, and it explodes, doesn't it? Uh huh. So you can use baking soda for a lot of things. And then it says we need some coarse salt. So we've got some coarse salt here. And that's what we're going to put on the top of the pretzels. But we're also going to have some cinnamon sugar out to put on top of the pretzels too. And I think we can all make two pretzels each because you're going to make one with salt and one with cinnamon sugar. How's that mm. sound? Yeah. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. so it looks like we have all the ingredients, so let's see what we need to do. It says, in a large bowl, dissolve the yeast into water, add one and a half cups of flour, the oil, and the sugar. All right, so let's get our yeast in there. Now, are you allowed to use your teeth to rip up in the package? No. No. Why? It'll break your germs. Germs, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it would break your teeth, but it would get probably kind of your germs. It could. It could. Okay. So remember I said that yeast was alive? Well, when it's in the package, it's kind of asleep. It's like it's in a coma, okay? It's not breathing. It's not doing anything. It's just kind of lying there, all right? So we put it in, out of the package. Oops. Take it out of the package, and when we add that warm water, that warm water's going to wake it up. You ever have anybody throw water on you when you're in bed? No. 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 Uh, you know what that's like. You get right up, don't you? Yeah. So that's what we're going to do with the yeast. We're going to throw that water in there, and we're going to wake it up. So now that yeast is, old, is awake. All right? He's swimming around in that water, and he's going, okay, what's going on? All right? And what happens when you first wake up? You're usually pretty hungry, aren't you? Yeah. All right. So we're going to give him his tablespoon of sugar so he can start eating. And actually, yeast isn't a he or a she. It's just kind of a it. Yeah. So we're going to get that spoonful of sugar. Now that yeast is happy. Okay? Because that yeast is swimming around. He's away. He's starting to eat his sugar. We're going to put the oil in. And the oil is just so that when we get that flour in there, that yeast can kind of slide around in the flour. Get all mixed in. It also helps the dough stay a little soft. So we're going to put two tablespoons of oil in. Okay, whenever we're in the kitchen and we're using things like oil, we always put the cap back on. Because, just in case we want the cap, we wouldn't have oil all over somebody, would we? We're all <laughs> over the floor. Okay. All right, so we've got that in. Now we're going to start putting the flour in. And who knows how yeast works? How does yeast work? Huh? Well, it rises, but how does it make it rise? Does it just like get a magic wand out and go rise, rise? No, it's the sugar. The yeast eats the sugar. And you know what it does after it eats the sugar? It farts. It farts. That's exactly It makes gas. Okay? Yeast, yeast makes gas. It makes gas called carbon dioxide gas. Okay? So when it's eating the sugar, it's blowing out the gas. And the flour is kind of like a balloon. It kind of holds in the gas. And that's why you see the yeast rise, because it's like a big balloon that's filling up with air. So let's start 
We're going to start with what? A cup and a half of flour. And we're going to get that mixed up a little bit just till it gets kind of gooey looking. Now, who has a mixer at home? Okay. So, if you don't have a mixer at home, that's okay. You can make this pretzels in a big bowl, but instead of mixing it with a mixer, you're going to have to just mix it by hand. Okay? So it's a little gooier that way, and it takes a little bit longer, but you can still make it. So if you say, well, I don't have a mixer, I can't make pretzels. Yes, you can. You just have to use a big bowl. All right, so we've got a cup and a half here so far. Our, and we have two and a half cups here. Now, if you do have a mixture at home, you have to be very careful. Because if you get your fingers too close to that, it grabs your finger and pulls it in, all the screaming in the world is not going to make that machine turn off by itself. Okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't hear you. Okay? It's going to keep moving and moving, and it's going to break your finger in about 15 places. Okay? So you have to be careful when you're using any kind of equipment in the kitchen. Sometimes if I put it on real high, a piece of metal will fly out and the person is sitting right there. And I aim it just right. It's <laughs> right in the glass. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to add just a little bit more flour. Now the reason why it says two and a half to three cups of flour is sometimes, depending on the weather, flour is drier or it's moister. Or when they build the flour in a big flour mill, they may have done it so much that it's too dry and you might need a little less flour, or it's too wet and you might need a little bit more flour. Okay? So that's why you start with two and a half cups, and then you slowly add that last half cup just to make sure that dough absorbs up all the flour. Depending on when the farmer picked the flour. You know, if you pick the wheat and it was a big rainy season, that flour might be a lot wetter. If it was a drought, the flour might be a lot drier. Just a little bit at a time, just to get that to the floor. But there goes a piece of dough. It didn't even hit you, did it? Okay? Now, once that 